good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm going to talk briefly about uh, AMUR. AMUR stands for uh, Adam Mickiewicz University Repository. Uh, and it is the first institutional repository established in Poland. And I must say that uh, we celebrate its fourth birthday just this month. So, <laughs> yes. And as I am a repository manager, I would like to share some reflections and, and experiences uh, with you. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, users, documents, so core issues. And we may say that if users are active in depositing and if documents are attractive, we may say that a repository might be a showcase for, for the university, yes, that uh, repository is a, a great occasion to, to, to showcase research output and I would like to convince you that it is possible and it starts to, to be in, in Poznań our, at our university. So in the first section of my presentation I would like to tell about our users, our internal users, I mean our academic staff. As you see we have uh, over 1,200 registered users who may self-archive their papers on voluntary basis. Uh, mandatory uh, self-archiving concerns only PhD thesis at our university. So it is the first step and I hope there will be another. Uh, two years ago we wanted to investigate uh, our scientists' uh, attitudes toward uh, self-archiving. So uh, we carried out, uh, carried out an online survey and asked them uh, what they think about self-archiving and what are the barriers. And it came up that there are main two uh, barriers to self-archiving. Concerns about copyright and concerns about extra time and effort. And I must say that it is also proved by similar survey uh, conducted abroad. But in spite of those barriers, we may observe some good trends uh, in, in uh, depositing uh, documents in our uh, repository. As you see here, our academic staff um, deposited over 700, uh, al almost uh, 900 papers last year. So uh, it was uh, doubled in number uh, in comparison to the pre to previous years. So it is a good and, and significant trend, I think. And uh, another interesting uh, trend is also that our uh, scholars in humanities and social sciences, uh, they deposit much more than their colleagues in, in natural and mathematical sciences. Um, yeah. Now, briefly about our external users, because they are also very crucial for us. Uh, we would like to know where are they from and, and how do they find uh, our repository content. So when I look at, uh, you can see that the, the, this graph uh, shows uh, downloads origins within just uh, last year. And we see that 49% uh, of our um, users were from Poland. 38 from the States. And I must say that it is quite surprising for us that so many uh, people from the, from the States, um, uh, they download the papers from, from what our... What language are the papers? Sorry? What language? Uh, mostly in, uh, in Polish, but also we have quite many um, university journals and they publish in, in, in English. But I think that we have also quite a big Polish community, community in the States and maybe that is why. Um, I must say that I didn't check it very um, uh, precisely, yes. And 13% from other countries, it is Asia, Africa, sometimes really very exotic countries like Burkina Faso, for example. So, yeah. And when we, when we look at traffic origins within last year, we can see that 69% of traffic origins is via Google and uh, 13 by, uh, by direct traffic and 18 uh, referral websites. 
So I think that this graph shows how important it is to have a robust repository which enables the, the document to be visible uh, on the internet. Yes, 69% via Google. And now the second section of my, of my presentation. So I would like to tell briefly about uh, repository content. You can see here on this graph document types deposited in our repository. And you can see that 71% uh, these are articles. Why so many articles? There are three factors. Uh, firstly, uh, our scholars deposit their papers, their articles. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, two years ago we received a ministerial grant and we could uh, deposit uh, archives of 14 university journals uh, in our repository. And thirdly, we have a huge collection of university journals in our repository, over 60 titles. And that is why we have so many articles. As you see, we have also PhD thesis, the um, collection which is very important for us. Uh, as I said, uh, based on mandatory, uh, depositing and we have also book chapters, book reviews, books and so on. Uh, and the total number of, uh, of documents in our repositories um, nearly 9,000. So I think it's quite good. And now the third and the last part of my presentation. So I would like to convince you that um, a repository might be a showcase for the university. And uh, I would like to to tell briefly about visibility, downloads, and citations. So, I assume that uh, you know ranking web of repositories. And uh, in this rank, repositories are ranked under four uh, quantitative uh, web indicators. And we are, as you see, ranked at uh, 220. And, uh, uh, in Poland, we are in the first place. Um, there were, in the last edition, the, the, there were uh, 1,746 repositories indexed in that, in that uh, ranking, yes? And now downloads, uh, as you see, I think that soon there will be two millions. So for our scholars, it is really a very strong argument that they should put their papers into the repository. And now, uh, the last thing, citations. Here you can see uh, Amor URI. This is uh, the prefix of our handle system uh, and the number 10,593. Uh, each of our document, which is deposited in, in our repository, has this number. And uh, I found recently some papers of our scholar which have that number. So I might be sure that they were extracted fr straight from, from our repository and then cited. So it is all, well, also, uh, I think, good argument, good, good advantage, yes, for, for uh, putting papers, depositing papers in, in the repository. And the last thing, our, uh, our repository timeline, as you see, we started 2008 and uh, our project was, was presented to, to our authorities in 2010. Uh, repositories was launched, uh, we joined Driver, uh, we, we uh, had our mandatory policy concerning PhD thesis and uh, promotion strategy and so on and so on. Okay, so thanks for listening. And I think I may say in this place and at this conference that I love open science. Thank you very much.